Hey there, gang. You're Guitar Sage, and yes, today I'm still sporting my Fu Manchu. And today we're going to learn bar chords. In fact, we're going to learn so many bar chords that um, you're not going to know what to do with yourself. We're going to learn over 250 bar chords in this lesson. There may be a part two. So let me stop chattering and get to it. Maybe I can fit them all in. But. Um, this is what we're gonna do, kids. We're gonna learn a lot of chords. You're gonna build your, your chord vocabulary today. So, if you know how to do bar chords, then you, this lesson probably is not for you. For those of you that need help in it, it's, it's for you, okay? So let's talk about some things first. Um, first off, what is a bar chord? A bar chord is a chord that's not open. So, um, things like C's and D's and G's E minors and A minors are not bar chords. Um, typically a bar chord is when we take our finger and lay it against two strings or more and you press down on that specific fret with one finger um, over several strings, two or more strings. Okay. Um, so for instance if I do this C chord and I do this which is a C suspended chord. That's, that counts as a bar chord because I'm barring something here. I'm laying it across two, two, two frets or two strings. Okay. Um, we're going to get into more complex ones today where we're holding our finger across all the strings or the five strings like that. Um, okay. So let's first off, let's talk about a couple concepts before we jump into it here. A lot of people just want to jump into things right away, but it's really important that you have a good foundation, you understand why it is that we're doing what we're doing um, and how we're doing what we're doing. Um, a lot of times just jumping into it is really a big waste of time because you're just going to fumble. Okay, So let's talk about two things that I want to accomplish in this lesson with you. First thing is, is that I want you to understand the concept of bar chords and how they move about the fretboard and how we can name them. So for instance, if you're going along in a chart and you're reading and all of a sudden you experience a B flat major chord, one, I want you to understand how to play it, how to formulate it on the fretboard even though you've never played one before. Okay, So um, I'm going to give you this knowledge, show you this knowledge so that you're able to grab these chords having never played them before. Okay, Hopefully after today you will play them at least once but um, you don't have to necessarily have played it before to be able to play it, okay? And the other thing is, is to actually be able to finger the chord. So two totally different things. The concept is actually going to be easier than understanding, or, or the, the concept is actually going to be easier than physically playing all these chords and getting good at it. That could take weeks, months, or maybe years, depending on how often you pick up your guitar and how long you're with your guitar when you're doing it, how hard you're trying, that, those sorts of things, okay? So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so, anything that we do, this is an important, state, an important statement, anything that we do in the open position, we can do up the neck, okay, with the use of bar chords, okay? For instance, um, and I'm gonna separate this today into sixth string root chords and fifth string root chords. What do I mean by that? I mean, uh, an E chord has an E as its root, and so that would be a sixth string, because that's a sixth string from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a sixth string. So that would be a sixth string root chord. So is E7, so is E minor, so is E minor seven. Obviously all the E chords are. Um, the other one would be a G chord, G major. Um, that is a sixth string root because the roots on the sixth string. Fifth string root chords would be things like A minor, A minor seven, um, A seven, A, C major. Okay, those are all fifth string root chords, and, um, and we may come up with some. We may even talk about some fourth string root chords as well. That'll get us well into the 300 chords category. So we may, we may try to tackle that today. This will probably be two part series. So, um, okay, let's start with the six string root chords. And what we're gonna do is, 
base these off of chords that you most likely already know. For instance, you know probably an E chord. If you don't, you know an E minor, E minor 7, E7, all those are based off of this. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is get a chord that you know. Let's take E major, okay? E major. So instead of playing it like this, the way I want you to play it is instead of using fingers 1, 2, and 3, I want you to use 2, 3, and 4. So formulate the chord like that. So of course, I'm moving quickly here for those of you that, that know this a little bit better. Uh, for those of you that don't, just rewind it. Okay, so that's how you're going to hold the chord. What we're doing is we're freeing up this first finger because we're going to need it. Okay, we're going to need it for barring. Okay, so here you go. So we've got our E chord here. What you're going to do is you're going to slide it up. And now your first finger is free to bar the first fret. Why are we doing that? Because before we weren't having to do it because we we're holding down just the notes that make up the E chord, E major, but the other notes are open. They're played open by the nut. Okay, if we wanted to move this nut up, we'd either snap a capo onto the guitar or use our finger as a bar. That's what we're doing here. Here we don't have to do it because the nut's taking care of that. Okay, really important that you understand this concept and digest it because it will really help with doing this. Okay, so there you go. So now if we take our first finger and we scooch it up along with these guys, now we can, if I press hard against all five of these, all six of these strings, then I get another major chord. In fact, I get an F major because that's my root right here. I get an F major, okay? Now, the concept goes like this. Wherever our, my, my root is, that's the letter name of the chord. So these are all major chords. I'm not changing any of this bit. So it's the same flavor all the way up but the letter name changes. So here, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and so on. Um, under my theory playlist, I explain all the notes on the fretboard and how to learn them in like five minutes. So check that out. Um, if you don't know that, then that would be beneficial to watch as well. So, um, like for instance, our F chord here. If we want to play an F sharp, this F turns into F sharp by scooching it up one fret, so everything moves up, and we have F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, B sharp, C, <laughs> B sharp, C, C sharp, B, D sharp, and so on. It just keeps going up. So for every bar chord that we learn here today, we're going to learn, uh, man, uh, we're going to learn 16, 20, about 22 bar chords. Multiply that times 12, I think that's 264, something like that. It's Brittany emailing me again. God, leave me alone. Um, Spears, yes, Spears. Um, just kidding. So, um, yeah, where, where am I at? So here we go, we got so the bar chord, right? 12 of them, bam, times our major chord. Let's go back here. How about an E minor chord? So there's our E minor chord. Here are the steps for building these chords. Free up your first finger. Now, it is free for this, for this chord, but we want to, instead of playing this chord with two and three, we want to play it with three and four so that our first finger is way free to do what we need to do here. So here's our E minor. And we're gonna take our first finger and do this bit. Sliding it as if the nut is moving up with every single movement that we do. Now this gives me access to 12 chords. Okay, so 12 times our, our one flavor, E minor, gives us 12 more chords. That's 24. Get it? Um, e minor 7 is this guy. Right? So again, let's free up this first finger. Let's do this. So now we're totally set to do this. And we got 12 more chords on up. Why 12? You know, you could keep going. Yeah, you could, but we're gonna have a duplicate chord. So this chord here, E minor, is the same as this chord right here. You know, technically it's the same chord. It's, it's up an octave, but it's still an E minor seven. Okay, so let's talk about all the forms that we could do this with. So pretty much everything open. Um, e minor, or we said E major. E7, right? You know that chord.
chord, we just do this. We do it with two and three instead of one and two. Do it with two and three. Freeze up this first finger to give us a whole new set of chords, okay? So we did this with E major, did it with E7, E minor. I'm looking at the chords here on my screen if you're wondering what I'm looking at. Um, e minor, E minor 7. Okay, we have E sus or E suspended. Looks like this. So here's E major. It resolves to an E major. So that's, that's the form right there. And we're gonna take a first finger and do that bit right there. Now let's talk about this for a minute. I'm, of course, playing these and it looks really easy and if you're not used to this sort of thing, then um, it's a little deceiving because you're gonna go pick up your guitar and you'll be like, I don't understand why it's not working. Probably not in that voice, but somewhere along the lines there, you're gonna be kind of cheesed off because you're not getting the same bit that I'm doing. Um, for some of you that are a little bit more advanced, you're probably getting it easier. Well, these chords take, like I say, the concept's a lot easier to get. You'll probably get the concept today, but you may take weeks or months to get these down or, or maybe even years. So um, just keep at them. You're building strength and you're building dexterity and you're building technique. So um, all of that is important when you're learning how to do this, okay? So. Don't get frustrated. You will get better doing these, okay? All right, let's keep going. We have a few more to do. Um, an 11 chord, also known as a four chord, also known as a suspended, which what we just talked about, but specifically an 11 chord usually has the seventh in it. Sometimes it has the ninth in it. Some of you won't know what that means. That's fine, don't worry about it. Just do the shape here. Um, we did this just now. Lift the ring finger that, do it more like this, or like that actually, do it with fingers three and four, and now it frees up that first finger and a whole new set of chords all the way up, okay? That's our 11 chord. We've got to finish it up here because we're running out of time. Okay, here's a real interesting one, G, G major, right? We play it like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. This, or there's also different ways to play a G, but there's our G. The way that I'm going to show it to you, you kind of want to be prepared to play it like this. Okay, why? Because we're going to take this first finger and put it way over here. Now, this is one of those chords that really is very difficult to play at first, but you don't have to play the whole, the whole thing, and I'll show you what I mean by that. If technically, if I'm holding the whole thing, there's our nut, so I could put my finger here, but I don't need it there because the nut's taking care of it. But if I scooch this up, that needs to come up to here, so I'm getting something like this. And I'm creating that major chord form, G major chord form, out of each one of those. But, let's simplify it a little bit. We don't necessarily need that pinky, which allows us to really chill out here and not be so um, strung up with our fingers. So if I were to do this, and then just mute this high E string, or, or just don't play it at all, then um, we're gonna get this kind of sound. Now sometimes with my right hand, I don't know if you can see it, my right hand I'll mute that string, I'll just lay a finger on it. And when I strum against it, you don't um, hear that one note. So I do that. Um, and so you can do this for things like, um, let's see if I was going um, blah, 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 like an A chord. I could do this, but that's, again, real difficult. So I might do something like this. There's an A, there's an A, there's an A. Yeah. So that one's pretty useful, and actually I use that a lot. So um, get used to that one. Even if you use portions of chords um, like that. Actually, I just taught Danny California, and uh, that chord right there is in the song. It's a walk down. Like that. So that's a portion of a chord, so you can see where that becomes useful. Okay? Um, all right, guys, we're out of time. We need a part two, so check it out. See ya.